Whether new shooter, longtime gun owner, or even police officer or soldier, your handgun needs a Crimson Trace laser sight or light. Get the confidence and reliability you need to protect family, home, and country. Crimson Trace. I'm a gun owner. Your views, advice, and questions are the driving force of gun talk. You know, I don't think that guns are scary things. Visit us online at www.guntalk.com. Call Tom now at 866-TALK-GUN. 866-825-5486. Let us know what you think about the gun-related issues of the day. Now, back to gun talk. All right, a lot of things to talk about. We are, uh, boy, we're all over the place. We're going to be talking about gun safety. That really hit a, a nerve with a lot of people last week where I was talking about safety and, and frankly, the way that uh, a lot of folks, gun fe- folks, including police officers, don't have a great safety record. We'll be talking a little bit more about that. I've got a, a story from a listener who talked about how he had his negligent discharge, and I'll, I'll have that for you in just a few minutes. But first, we want to talk about well, some of the coolest stuff you'll ever get to own. Machine guns, silencers, suppressors, NFA stuff. Todd Raffner joins us right now with some pretty cool news. Hey, Todd, how are you? Great, Tom. How are you? Good. Now, I guess I'm going to let you give a little bit of your background. Uh, board member, NRA? Yeah, um, I've been on the NRA board of directors for the past uh, 15 years. Uh, I was a lobbyist <laughs> yeah. for for the NRA in Arizona for uh, two years, and um, I'm, I'm also a lobbyist for the uh, for knife rights, as you well know, because you've been involved with us and supported us over the years. And we've changed knife laws all over the all over the country, and now we're uh, I'm, I'm taking that model of of working in the states to change laws for the better to the to the NFA community, the NFA world, which is. Uh, under under assault and attack from the Obama administration with a new uh, executive order to to change the way firearms uh, is, that are regulated by the NSA are transferred to folks. Uh, many okay, people... uh, explain. Uh, hey, Todd, Todd, let me get you yeah. back up. I don't I don't want us to assume that people know uh, yeah. NFA National Firearms Act. Explain what that is and what it covers, if you would, please. Well, yeah, the, the National Firearms Act covers silencers, machine guns, short barrel rifles, short barrel shotguns, and what's called any other weapons. And if you want to purchase something, that, uh, any one of those items, you have to fill out a federal form. You have to pay a $200 tax. And if you purchase it as an individual, you have to get a local chief law enforcement officer to, to certify that you will not use the the item nefariously, and that you are allowed to own it in the jurisdiction in which you live. And then that is all submitted to the ATF. The ATF turnaround time is currently uh, about uh, about eight or nine months, roughly. Uh, some people are getting back a little bit quicker, but call it eight or nine months right now. Mm-hmm. And then when it comes back, it goes back to the dealer that's selling you the item, and then they do a mix check on you like any other firearms purchase, and then you walk out with, with your item. So you've filled out a form, you've gone to the chief law enforcement officer, you've paid a $200 tax, you've gone through a mix check, and then you get to walk out with, uh, with your new item. And how, many people what, who, how many people who have gone through this end up uh, using their, their items criminally? Oh, gosh. I, 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 I don't even know of any cases specifically. I've never heard of a case specifically where an NSA item has been used in a crime. I mean, I'm sure it, it may have happened, but it's got to be significantly less than 1%. Just like CCW permit holders are well under 1% in terms of committing crimes and, and revocations around the country. I mean, it just who would go through that process and then, and then go out and, and commit a crime with it? It just, it just doesn't happen. Exactly. Okay, so you have formed NFA FA. What is that? Yeah, it's it's the NFA Freedom Alliance. And if you actually, uh, it, it, this is a good opportunity to say, if you go on Facebook and and you go to and you look, you search for NFA Freedom Alliance, you can see our Facebook page, and then our website is nfafa.org. 
and you can go take a look and, and see what we're all about. One of, the, one of the reasons that I formed this is because when I was working uh, with another organization representing, exclusively representing the silencer industry, uh, the, the ATF came out with a proposal. Well, let, let me go back. When we were talking about the, the, the chief law enforcement sign-off, which we call mm-hmm. CLEO, chief law enforcement officer, Right. One of one of the things that's a problem is around the country there are politically motivated CLEOs who simply will not even look at the paperwork. They just say, We're not gonna sign this, uh, don't even bring it to us, we're not gonna certify it, don't bring it here, we're not interested. And and the way that people who live in places like that are are able to still go ahead with a purchase is by forming a trust or another entity. So you can form a legal trust, which you can do for as little as $100 in some places and as much as $500 or $1,000 in some places. But you can do it inexpensively, form a trust, and then because the trust is not a person, you skip the, the CLIO certification process and go straight to the ATF's process. So what what a lot of people did was form these trusts. And now the ATS has said, "Well, now you're trying to skirt. You're trying to skirt the law. You're not getting the local CLIO sign-off. So we're going to implement a new plan where even if you have a trust, the responsible parties on the trust are going to have to go through the CLIO sign-off. So people who, for instance, live in Dallas County, Texas, where the sheriff or the chief of police will not sign, will not certify, uh, that they're going to be they're going to be." Unable to purchase NSA items in Dallas because the, the chief law enforcement officer is not going to is not going to certify their forms. So because of politically motivated anti-gun uh, Cleos, we've got this 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 glitch. And so while I was working lobbying for the silencer industry, I came up with the concept along with working very closely with the NRA. We came up with a concept called shall certify and that should be familiar to folks because we have shall issue concealed weapons permits around the country now Mm -hmm. shall certify basically says that the clio has to certify the federal forms if the uh the applicant is not a prohibited possessor under state law or federal law so it works just like a concealed weapons permit where it goes to the to the chief law enforcement officer, and they're compelled by state law to certify. They have to certify it if you're not a prohibited possessor. And so that will it's a, it's it's not a it's not a panacea. It's not going to solve the entire problem of what the mm-hmm. ATF is trying to do now. Right. But it it will certainly be it'll staunch the bleeding. It will help, and it will it'll prevent what we believe is going to be a huge backlog in uh, in applications. Uh, come January, February, or March, sometime earlier, early in 2015, when they, when the ATF plans to implement this new program. All right, question for you: Can the ATF just do this on its own without getting the okay of Congress? They could just say these are the new rules. Well, yes. Unfortunately, the the uh, the Gun Control Act and 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 the uh, the National Firearms Act have rule have granted rulemaking authority to to the ATF. And so the ATF has that rulemaking authority. And so essentially what happened was, was after Newtown, uh, Barack Obama said to all of his departments, let me know what I can do with my, with my phone and my pen. And, and Eric Holder in the Justice Department, because ATF is now under the Justice Department, they're, they're no, right. longer, uh, no longer under Treasury. So now that they're under justice, Eric Holder was able to say, okay, well, look, here's something that we, we perceive as a, quote, loophole. And uh, here's a way we can go after gun owners, and, and so, they're using it. So I just I need to put a fine point on this. I live in a particular parish in the state of Louisiana, which would be a county or other places. Yeah. Our sheriff and our county, or our parish refuses to okay NFA. So we have to get a trust or an LLC or do that. And it's not that we're going around him. We are complying. And this is the important part. I want people to understand. We are complying with the law. We are doing exactly what the law says we should do because there are various ways to get there. But we're having to do this because our sheriff, Jack Strain, simply says, I don't care what the law says. I don't care who you are. I'm not okay in any of them, period. That, that's 100% right. It, it's full compliance with the law. It's not a loophole. It's, it's what the law is. And, it, and, it's, and it's, it, it is a legal, direct avenue for you to be able to own NSA items. And uh, one of the things I wanted to make sure I pointed out before I forget is that uh, 
I've already worked to pass this shall certify legislation in three states, and then uh, and then a couple of others have passed it on their own. But I worked to get to get it passed in Arizona, Utah, and Kansas. And I can tell you for a fact that in Arizona it's working because the Tucson Police Department, where I live in Tucson, the Tucson Police Department has never okayed, never certified any Form Ones or Form Fours for anyone that wasn't actual law enforcement, and. Uh, I was the first applicant to take it down to the, the Tucson Police Department, and in in 30 or 35 days, they have 60 days here. We're going to get it. it uh, we're going to get that reduced to 30 days. But I think it was about 35 days. They approved my Form One to build an SVR, a short barrel rifle, and uh, and the system worked. And now they have a strategy and a plan in the Tucson Police Department where there are three people that are uh, trained to do this in the police department and make sure that these forms are getting certified in in compliance with the new state law. All right, now, Todd, the uh, the website is nfafa.org, and the goal, I take it, is to get legislation passed in states which forces the uh, CLIO to certify unless there is a legitimate reason where you basically don't qualify. It's just like concealed carry. If you qualify, if there's nothing that prohibits you from um, legally from doing this, they have to issue it. That, that's, that's 100% correct. And if you go to, if you go to nfafa.org, you can see our complete plan. The whole plan is there. The whole strategy, all of it is explained. And then the other thing is we're, we're asking people to go to our Facebook page. If you look up NFA Freedom Alliance on Facebook, uh, and like the page. And, and the reason we're asking people to do that is so they can be kept apprised as we move forward from state to state. And uh, if you're a dealer or a manufacturer and you want to get involved, we're, we're looking for folks to get involved at that level. If people need to step up and help us out, we need to raise the money in order to do this. It's not cheap. As you know, uh, when, when I fly around the country lobbying for the other organizations that you support and, and that you've worked with me on, it can become very expensive for, for us to just get there. It's just it's just a matter of getting there. We've got to raise money in order for me to fly all over the place and go get this done. And we've got 43 states we've got to work on uh, to get the shell certify legislation enacted. And and if uh, if somebody wants to uh, uh, to work with us at a higher level than just becoming a member, they can call me. My phone number's on the website. They can call me anytime. Sounds good, Todd. I appreciate it. You do a, a great job. I can just tell people I'm on the board of uh, Knife Rights, and he's done a super job there. This is a great idea. I am behind it all the way. The website is nfafa.org. Get involved. Get informed. Once you get informed, you are want, going to want to get involved. Thank you, Todd. I appreciate that. All right, 866-TALK-GUN will get you in here. I'm Tom Gresham, and this is Gun Talk. If you're looking for a safe and trusted way to sell your firearms, look no further than Dury's Gun Shop. I trusted them to sell my dad's collection. They built their business for over 50 years on honesty and customer service. Dury's Guns will buy any size collection or estate, none too big or too small. Selling your firearms to Dury's Guns is easy. Go with the pros. I trust Dury's Guns. Dury'sGuns.com Looking for shooting instruction but don't know where to go? Well, we have it, and you can access hours of training and safety videos, which you can watch on your home computer. On GunTalkTV.com, we have top competitive shooters, the best in self-defense trainers, and folks who have hunted all over the world, helping you learn which gun to buy, how to use it, how to store it safely, and everything else you need to be a safe and competent shooter. We also have gun makers showing off their newest rifles, shotguns, and handguns. Doesn't matter if you're a veteran shooter or a complete beginner. You'll find what you need at GunTalkTV.com. You can check it out for free, and you can get full access for only $5.95 a month. That gives you unlimited access to hundreds of videos, and we're adding more all the time. Run the videos over and over to make sure you understand what's being said. Skip around. You're in control. Get smarter, shoot better. Visit GunTalkTV.com. The Ruger American Rimfire Rifle combines features of the Ruger American Rifle and innovations of the 1022 Rimfire Rifle to appeal to all bolt-action enthusiasts. It features a modular stock system that provides comb height options for scope or iron sight use, a power bedding integral bedding block system for outstanding accuracy, 
a Ruger Marksman adjustable trigger, and a 1022 style rotary magazine for reliable feeding. The Ruger American Rimfire Rifle, another rugged, reliable firearm from Ruger. Introducing your new best friend in home defense, Guard Dog from Federal Premium Ammunition. With low recoil and reliable feeding, Guard Dog is all the protection you need. Guard Dog features a patented full metal jacket construction with an expanding polymer which minimizes overpenetration through interior walls. This dog's got bark and bite. Protect your home and family with Guard Dog in home defense from Federal Premium Ammunition. What's that? It's my Trigicon. What's a Trigicon? Only the best rifle scope in the world. <laughs> Says who? Uh, how about the U.S. Marine Corps, Special Forces, Navy SEALs? You heard of these guys? Sure. Well, they're all using Trigicons. Let me see it. Wow, this is really sharp. And a lot of professional hunters are using Trigicon, too. You probably caught it on some TV and radio shows. Yeah, I have heard some of them swear by their Trigicon. I swear by it. You know, I could have been a Navy SEAL. Well, the closest you're going to get now is buying a Trigicon. Hey, Trigicon is the brand of rifle scopes that more and more hunters are swearing by. That's because every Trigicon is handcrafted using the finest optic materials. The bright aiming point can guarantee you a great hunt from dawn to dusk. Get your Trigicon at a dealer near you or visit them on the web at Trigicon.com. That's T-R-I-J-I-C-O-N.com. Trigicon. Brilliant aiming solutions. Alien Gear Holsters, the most comfortable and concealable holsters on the planet, offers big savings with our new two-holster combo. Buy two complete holsters for as little as $49.88. Choose from any available holster style for the guns of your choice. Alien Gear Holsters are made right here in the USA and include a 30-day trial, forever warranty, and free shell trades for life. Visit AlienGearHolsters.com. Stay connected with Gun Talk. Download the Gun Talk app for your smartphone and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Gun Talk Media and at YouTube.com slash Gun Talk TV. Now more Gun Talk. All right, straight to the phones, line three. Mike's with us out of Phoenix. Mike, you looking for some ammo? Hello, Hello Tom. Hey, Mike. Yeah. What you looking for? I want you to expand a little bit on the uh, nine millimeter mm -hmm. uh, self defense ammo, non plus P. Let me ask but, you, but, wh why non plus P? Because my little booklet says I'm not to shoot plus P. What gun is it? Smith and Wesson. What model? Uh, yeah. <laughs> How long? M and P. M and P. M and P. Uh, you yeah. can shoot plus P in that. Uh, here's well, the thing. Here, here's, here's the thing. Shoot regular practice ammo most of the time when you're shooting at the range. And then load plus P or whatever. Load any ammo you want to for self-defense. You're not going to shoot very much of it. You're certainly not going to wear out the gun. It's certainly going to be okay. Uh, but here's factory ammo I'm talking about. Here's why I say this. All handguns for self-defense suck. They're awful. They're terrible. They're inefficient. They're ineffective. They just don't work well. The reason that we want a lot of ammo is because it sometimes takes a lot of hits to stop a bad guy. Handguns are terrible things to use for self-defense. We only use them because it makes people crazy when we, we you know, walk around with ARs and shotguns, as we have certainly seen. Having said that, you want the best ammo you can possibly put in there when somebody's trying to cut your head off. And that's not figurative anymore. So for the 2, 3, 4, 10, 12 shots you're going to shoot, plus, here's the thing. I would take an M&P, and Smith & Wesson will go crazy when I say this. I would shoot a thousand rounds of plus P out of an M&P and never think about it because the gun is just that good. Now, they may have some reason they say, well, don't do this, but I'm just telling you, the gun will hold up to it. Shoot cheap, low power stuff for practice. Carry the very best ammo you could possibly carry because it's 
barely good enough. The very best ammo we have in handguns is barely good enough. That's why we carry so much of it. That's what I would do, Mike. All right. Uh, let me get down to John on uh, line one. He's in Cabot, Arkansas. Hey, John. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, I, just, I had a question. I was listening to the gentleman earlier from the NFA, FA, mm-hmm. um, and he was talking about the, I guess, the chief law enforcement officer of uh, his area or some of the areas not wanting to sign off mm-hmm. um, on the ATF paperwork. And you mentioned, I guess, the sheriff of each area and the chief of police of each area. But wouldn't wouldn't the uh, United States Marshal of each district trump those guys? And generally, I know they're political appointees, but generally those guys are are very pro law enforcement um, and pro gun. Uh, the answer is no. Um... A lot of people don't understand the sheriff is absolutely the chief law enforcement officer for that county. Trump's everybody, include the, including the feds. The, the sheriff, the, there's a reason they call him the high sheriff. The sheriff has amazing powers. And so the sheriff is almost always, as far as I know, always the chief law enforcement officer of a county or in Louisiana parish or in Alaska, a borough. Um, having said that, it's possible to get a police chief to sign off and submit it, and it probably will go through. But I have never heard of anybody going to a United States Marshal. Uh, and i got to tell you, while there may be people in the Marshal Service who are pro-gun, there also are a lot of people in the Marshal Service who don't have such a good record. I'm trying to be as kind as I can be here. Okay, look, the Marshal Service were the people who machine gunned 14-year-old Sammy Weaver in the back. They're the ones that killed this 14-year-old as he was running away, Ruby Ridge. And the guys who did that got promotions and got medals and got awards for it. So, yeah, I still hold a grudge there. Yeah, I still have a problem with that. Shouldn't have been there in the first place. Killed his dog. You want to know where a lot of the radicalism in gun rights comes from? Starts right there at Ruby Ridge. If you haven't studied up on it, you need to because you can't fully understand this from either side of the equation until you really understand Ruby Ridge. One of Talker Magazine's 100 most important radio talk show hosts in America. You're listening to Gun Talk, heard every week at this time on great radio stations across America. Stay tuned. Gun Talk is coming right back. Covering all aspects of gun ownership every week on this fine radio station. You're listening to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. All right, back with the 866-TALK-GUN. We'll get you in. 866-825-5486. Here's an interesting one out of Indiana. Guy works for the uh, Lake of the Four Seasons private community. He's a seasonal landscaping employee. Been there for 21 years. He got fired after 21 years, because he's a gun owner. Not because he was carrying a gun, but just because he owns guns. Nick Ferlano says he had worked for LOFS, that's Lake of Four Seasons, uh, for 21 years before this summer when, in conversation among co-workers, he acknowledged that he believed in the Second Amendment and kept a gun at home. Two days after that conversation, his supervisor approached him and asked him if he carried a gun. Ferlano admitted that he owned a gun, but never carried it while working. So the supervisor says, well, we got together with the board, and you're fired. Because it violates, he said the conversation with his coworkers violated the company's no-tolerance policy. (laughs) Yeah, no-tolerance is right. As such, he was fired immediately. All right. In Indiana, here's the problem that this uh, homeowner's group is going to have. In Indiana, that's illegal. They have a uh, take-your-gun-to-work law there, amended in 2011, and when they required him to tell about his gun and then they fired him for having a, a gun at home, that's illegal. So he's filed suit, and he's asking not only for actual and punitive damages, attorney's fees, et cetera, he's also asking the judge to order the property owner's association 
to refrain from engaging in similar practices with regard to other employees. One to keep an eye on. Very interesting. Let's see. Line one, Neil is with us out of Arkansas. Neil, thank you for your patience. You're on Gun Talk. Hey, Neil. Yeah, Tom. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just want to say, you know, it's like this, man. I've been around guns ever since I've been a little kid, you know? Mm-hmm. And my philosophy is simply this, guys. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. You can take oh. a loaded gun. As long as nobody bothers it, it's not going to harm or kill anybody. True enough. You, you take a loaded gun, you put it on the table, you come back in 100 years, it might rust, be rusty, but it's not going to do anything. So, no, absolutely true. So, certainly. However, I would say this. this is, I'm going to spin this around. Look, thank you for the call, Neil. Let me spin this around. Guns, yeah, I hear guns don't kill people. People with guns, people, people whatever, whatever, whatever. But it's also not always a bad thing. It's going to, I know people are going to go, what? What did you say? It's not always a bad thing to shoot somebody. It's not always a bad thing to kill somebody. <gasps> yes. Guy's kidnapping your kid. A, a guy is has stood up in a crowd and he is going to cut someone's head off. Well, that would never happen here except in Oklahoma. Oh, what? Yeah, Oklahoma. Beheading. Cut a woman's head off. So let's not get so wrapped up with saying, well, we don't kill people. Sometimes we do, and sometimes people need to be shot. Sometimes people need to be killed. Cops do it. We do it. Somebody's going to cut the next woman's head off. Somebody is stabbing somebody to death. Is it wrong? Do you think... Does anybody think it's wrong? How? All right, let me rephrase that. How does anybody think it's wrong to shoot someone who is murdering someone else? How does anybody think it's wrong to shoot and kill someone who is cutting another person's head off? How is that, by any measure, by anything in the world, by any religion you can imagine, by any God that you can come up with, how is that wrong to stop someone from committing murder? I don't know. 866-TALK-GUN. Maybe you have a a thought on that. Ellen's on line two out of California. Hey, Ellen, how you doing? What you looking for? (laughs) Hey, I'm looking for um, some help. Um, I'm a female uh, hiker and backpacker, and Mm -hmm. um, I hike in both California and Nevada up here here in beautiful Lake Tahoe, and I'm seeking a firearm um, that I can conceal maybe on a waist pack in front Mm -hmm. when I'm out hiking or backpacking, Um, and it has to be lightweight because, you know, weight is everything, especially when you're going on a long backpack trip. Right, right. All right, here's the critical question here. Are we most concerned about two-legged predators or four-legged predators? Two-legged predators. Makes it easier. Uh, <laughs> because the, you need a bigger gun. Frankly, you need a bigger gun for the four-legged predators. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the, do you carry a fanny pack? I will. I will. I, mean, I can get a small fanny pack um, okay. that I'll wear along with my backpack or day pack. Okay. What, before I, we go down the road of what, what gun, what kind of experience do you have in shooting? I'm um, actually very little. I do have a SIG um, nine millimeter, and I've shot it about ten years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I'm, you know, I'm pro gun. I want. I really want to learn more. Um, my dad is a concealed carry, so I've been around guns quite a bit. But personally, I have. I don't have a lot of recent experience shooting. Okay. Uh, do you like your SIG? I like it, but um, I really prefer a revolver. I like just. I, I'm. I want to see the bullets in the in the chamber. You know, just that I want to sure. very basic like that. Yeah, and the fine. automatic just made me, and it's also too heavy for my um, for backpacking. Right. Now they do make Sig does make some nice lightweight uh, smaller automatics, but they are semi automatic So let's talk about revolvers because I, I kind of <laughs> like where you're heading on this. I'm going to make a couple of suggestions. Um, there are several good small revolvers that would work. We're t- talking about thirty. Eight or three fifty seven magnum, be about the same size, either mm-hmm. a two inch or three inch barrel, personal preference, 
the, the longer okay. the barrel, the easier it is to shoot. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Ruger has one called the LCR, Light Compact Revolver. It's very lightweight and shoots really well. It's very nice. Smith mm-hmm. & Wesson has several different ones. And they have, here's the thing to look out for. Some of them are heavier than others. They have what they call their air weights or, or fly weights. Uh, yeah, lighter. I saw an air weight recommended online and on an right. article, a 38 air weight. Right. Now, one thing you want to make sure of, and this is my personal preference, is I would get one that does not have a hammer at all. It would be a hammerless model where the mm-hmm. only way to shoot it is to pull the trigger. You can't cock the hammer. Okay. Uh, the, the reason for that is twofold is a hammer can get hung up on the inside of a fanny pack when you're pulling it out, mm-hmm. and whereas one without a hammer is nice and smooth. The mm-hmm. other thing is, in a self-defense situation, I don't. you may not be familiar, but a, a revolver, if you cock the hammer, the trigger pull after that is very light. It doesn't take mm-hmm. much pressure on the trigger to fire it. Versus if you just pull the trigger, it's called a double action, it takes mm-hmm. a lot more effort to pull the trigger. If you are frightened, scared, running, out, you know, fighting for your life, mm-hmm. you really don't want to cock the hammer because then a one or two pounds of pressure on the trigger will fire it versus maybe eight or 10 pounds of pressure to pull the trigger when you're just pulling the trigger to fire it. You believe me, you so don't have any trouble. If I, if I cocked it, then it would be too easy to fire it. I might misfire and waste bullets. Is that what you're saying? Well, you might misfire it and hit somebody you didn't intend to hit. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which would be even worse than wasting ammo. So mm-hmm. I would say get something that's a double action only. That would be a hammerless revolver. And Taurus makes them, uh, Smith & Wesson makes them, and Ruger makes them. And it's truly, no kidding, personal preference. They all make good stuff. So okay. go to the, and really important here. The other part is, if you can possibly do it, find a place where you can rent them and shoot them at a range or get with an instructor and buy a little time with an instructor and have him or her bring revolvers so that you get to try because that's going to be really important to see which one you like the, the feel of, try them out, and then you'll figure it out. But I think you're on the right path. I think a revolver for in a fanny pack, a hammerless, double-action-only revolver is an excellent choice. Put good bullets in it, good ammo, practice with the cheap stuff, Spend good money for hollow point expanding bullets for self protection. And I, I wish you luck with it. I think it's a good choice. And congratulations on taking control of your own safety. That is smart, smart, smart. 866 Talk Gun. Springfield Armory presents the Gear Up promotion. Until October 31st, customers who purchase any new Springfield Armory pistol can sign up to receive three additional magazines and a free double bag pouch by visiting gearup.springfield-armory.com. That's a value of up to $135. XDs, XDMs, the XDS, and all 1911s. To learn about all the Springfield Armory firearms, go to springfield-armory.com. Waterfowl season is here, and you're pumped, ready, raring to go. But man, those non-toxic shot shells are expensive. Did you know you can reload your own non-toxic ammo for waterfowl hunting? Go take a look at MechReloaders.com. Mech Reloaders have been trusted since 1956, and they have experienced customer service representatives to help you get started. Just go to MechReloaders.com. That's M-E-C Reloaders.com. Or ask your local retailer. Want your next gun purchase to be fast and hassle-free? Well, at galleryofguns.com, you can search through thousands of models from our huge firearms inventory. Find a great offer from a local dealer that includes all fees and taxes. And there's no need to arrange a transfer. Gallery of Guns takes a small deposit on your credit card, and your gun will be at your chosen dealer in as little as 48 hours. Plus, your gun will be covered by our guaranteed lifetime replacement warranty. Galleryofguns.com. Search, find, buy. It really is just that easy. For 36 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's ussportsmen.org.
You are one among many, a growing brotherhood, and yes, sisterhood, of those who choose a concealed carry lifestyle. Those who believe the Second Amendment is as vital to our freedom today as it was more than two centuries ago. Those who embrace the natural right to protect themselves, their loved ones, even perfect strangers, should danger arise. You are one among many, and we've got your back. Carry Taurus and carry on. TaurusUSA.com You don't need a smartphone to listen to Gun Talk online. Just log on to GunTalk.com and click the Listen tab for options that'll let you listen right on your computer. Here again, Tom Gresham as Gun Talk continues. Oh, we're going to be talking about uh, gun safety here in a few minutes here. Let me, um, great email I got from a fellow. Rod, I appreciate this. Hold on just a second here. Excuse me, I have to cough. Um, he says he really enjoys the stories from Grits. I've been reading some of Dad's stories. He says, the story of my first deer hunt had me smiling the entire time. I grew up reading your dad and watching him on TV. My first book on guns was the book Weatherby, The Man, The Gun, The Legend. At the time I purchased it, I knew Grits, but I wondered who Tom was because I was the co-author of that. Now I know. Uh, he says, we've never met, but uh, I'm glad that you're part of my weekly routine of learning about and enhancing my enjoyment of the firearms world. Now, we get to the question. I, like you, am right-handed but left-eye dominant. I'm 50. I have not really tried shooting on my left side. I'm interested in training myself to use my dominant eye, and I was wondering if you had any tips or insight in how I could do this. Any help you could provide would be helpful. Okay. There are a ton of people out there who are right-handed and left-eye dominant, and they shoot right-handed, and they've been fighting this left-eye dominant thing all their lives. Uh, If you are one of them, and they say that 11, 12% of the people are left-handed, but I believe 35 to 40% of the people are left-eye dominant. If you have identified this and you have considered maybe I should try shooting from the left shoulder, it's not easy at first. There is a way to get there that's fairly easy. But when you first change over and try to put a shotgun or a rifle to your left shoulder, man, it feels weird. It's just it's like, I could never do this. Well, yeah, you can. You do it, you know, what you don't remember is that when you first put a rifle up to your right shoulder, that felt weird too. Now, you may have been little, but it was awkward. It was weird. It didn't feel right. You just had to do it a lot. Here's my suggestion. And I, I ask Rod to do this, and I hope he will do this. And if anybody else would like to do this and give us a report, we'd love to get a range report on how this works for you. Here's the deal. Get you either a, um, a long gun, air gun, a dummy gun, or a very, very well-checked and absolutely guaranteed unloaded one of your guns. And here's what we're going to do. Every evening, while you're watching TV or whatever, during the commercial breaks, I want you to stand up, Pick up your gun and slowly, and this is the key, slowly mount the gun to your left shoulder. You've checked it and mount it. Look down the sights. If you have the ability to go ahead and dry fire it in a safe direction, go ahead and do that. Slowly put it back down, put it back up to your shoulder and do this over and over again. Do it 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, and then an hour later, do it again. If you do this for a month, if you would shoulder that gun slowly, slowly is important here. Don't get ahead of yourself. I'm guessing that after a month, it will feel so comfortable to you to put that gun to your left shoulder that you'll be ready to go out to the range and shoot it. You do all of this without ever firing the gun. You're just mounting it, and you're looking down the sights. You're getting used to the feel. You're putting that left cheek on the stock. You're, getting, you're mounting the gun. You go put it down. You bring it back up. You mount the gun good to go. I would uh, I would ask your help in this. If you are left eye dominant, right handed, would you do this experiment for me? Or if you've done this before, if you're somebody who's actually made the switch, tell me how you did it. Call me 866-TALK-GUN, 866-TALK-GUN. I'd love to know how you mastered the cross dominant challenge the way I did. Gun Talk stands for safety, personal responsibility, and common courtesy. To be a part of the show, call 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. Gun Talk will be right back. Uh, 
had uh, just got an email from John. He said he's been looking for CDs of the old American Sportsman TV show from the 60s and 70s. Those were the, the shows with uh, Kurt Gowdy was the host. My dad was a field produ- producer and uh, field host on a lot of the shows. I don't know of any that are available. As I understand it, uh, Kurt Gowdy's son, Trevor Gowdy, ended up with the rights to the show. But I don't think they've ever been brought out again. So I wish they would be. It'd be well for one thing. It'd be interesting to see how they hold up. I mean, I said be forty plus years ago, fifty years ago. See, would we still watch them? I'm sure the pace was much slower than we're used to today. If if I ever hear of them being available, you can bet I'll let you know. So just a thought. Let me drop down line four. Michael's with us out of uh, Fairfield Bay, Arkansas. Hey, Michael. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, you the left eye, right eye guy? That's me. Made the transition when I was in my early teens with a twenty two. I just couldn't see right very well, you know, shooting right handed, so I just started shooting left handed. Uh but check this out. I used my handgun with my right hand. <laughs> no, you know what? I did I did the exact same thing. I'm right handed very much right handed. So I shoot handguns right handed. I shoot long guns left handed. But see, you and I are both using our left eye, no matter which gun we use, right? Exactly. So when you did this transition, how long, do you remember how long it took you to switch over to where you felt comfortable shooting from the left shoulder? About five minutes. <laughs> of, course, of course, when you're a teenager, you can do a lot of stuff you can't do later on. You haven't grooved at all. <laughs> right. I just, uh, I just said, well, I'll try this from the left side, and it worked great, so... And, and I was lucky because I was real young, probably five or six, when Dad saw that I was using to, even toy guns. You know, the deal of you see a kid do it, put the gun up to the right shoulder, but they cock their head way over so they can line the, the left eye up. That's that you, you see. And we've all seen people do that. And he saw that and said, okay, from now on, the gun goes on the left shoulder from now on. And I, I, I switched over. Hey, Michael, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm glad other people have been able to do that. If you've done that, let me know if you made the switch, uh, 866 Talk Gun. Let's go t- on line one. Steve's traveling through West Virginia. You looking for a 1911, Steve? Uh, yeah, yeah, I am. Uh, by the way, I have tried the left hand and because I'm a little arthritic uh, in my right hand. That's my mm-hmm. dominant hand, but I have tried left hand on handguns, and it seems to actually work pretty well for me, and it's actually more comfortable than my right hand, even though I'm dominantly right-handed. Interesting. Okay. So what you looking for? Um, but uh, I've got an opportunity, a couple opportunities, uh, to pick up either a pre-Croatia uh, Springfield uh, 1911 45 or a brand new or a new uh, Rock Island 1911 uh, style hmm. 45. And I was wondering uh, what your opinion of either of those would be and what what would I need to do to, to verify what vintage the uh, the Springfield is? I guess my initial thought is, why would I care? I'm not sure why I'll care if it's pre-Croatia, after Croatia. I mean, the Springfield Army makes great 1911s. What they're making now, I think, are terrific. Um, frankly, here's what I think you got to do. you got to figure out which one you like and buy that one. I wouldn't worry about the brand. I wouldn't wor- worry about the pedigree. I would just say, look, which one do I like? Which one has the features I want? Which one can I get the better deal on, perhaps? I don't know how that's working for you. But sometimes I sometimes I think we strain at the... Well, you know, they say, the experts always say, we, we all tend to worry about the wrong things in, in all things in life. I mean, we're worried about ob- Ebola. Oh, by the way, did you hear MSNBC? says the NRA, yes, the National Rifle Association is responsible for Ebola coming to the U.S. I am not making this up. It's absolutely true. You can see it on the internet. The NRA is responsible for Ebola coming to the U.S. I knew they were good, but man, I had no idea. Wow. No black helicopters here. Just the facts about gun rights and gun ownership. This is Gun Talk.